Hello everybody. My name is Carlton Legg. I'm the director here at the Attleboro Area Industrial Museum. Welcome. You're in the LG Balfour Company exhibit. LG Balfour came to Attleboro in 18, well actually he was born in 1885, came to Attleboro in 1914, started a business that became famous for making sorority and fraternity pins and eventually class rings. So your class ring might have been made by the Balfour Company, may still be made by the Balfour Company. And we have probably one of the largest collections of things from Balfour and the Balfour Company and Mr. Balfour himself. This is his mannequin pseudo person. And this is actually his desk that was in his office. We have a lot of different things here. Uh, Balfour was known not just for rings and sorority and fraternity, but they branched out. And they actually made the first ever World Series trophy for Major League Baseball in 1967, the fateful year the Red Sox were beat by the St. Louis Cardinals. Um, we have most, all of our donations came from people who worked at the Balfour Company. And Mr. Balfour had the good fortune and great uh, foresight to put money away. He has a trust now that we periodically are able to get some grant money to do big things here in our 120 year old building like roofs and walkways and hopefully windows. So we hope you guys come down and visit us sometime here at the Edinburgh Area Industrial Museum. We do have temporary hours due to the COVID. Um, we're, we're open Thursday and Friday, 10 to 4, and Saturday by appointment only. Uh, we had a great Thursday night at the museum. So far, we haven't reinstated that, but look forward to doing that in the near future. You can find out more information at our Facebook page, at the World Area Industrial Museum. You can find out at our webpage, industrialmuseum.com. And you can call us, 508-222-3918. And hopefully you can get over here and see us. Welcome, we're at the Eugene Hunt exhibit. Eugene Hunt was an Attleboro native who had an engine turning, machine turning company. He started out working for larger companies and then created his own right here in little old Attleboro. Uh, engine turning and machine turning are machine engraving. So what Eugene Hunt would do, get uh, different types of accessories and add wonderfully complex designs and engraved names and, and did uh, wonderfully uh, laid out pieces of jewelry. So what we have here, this is our rotating machine. And essentially it puts a spiral radial design on a round piece of stock. So what I'm going to do is show you a little bit how it works. And we start with a great piece of, uh, this is, looks like brass or bronze. We have a little hole in it so we can make a keychain or something to that effect out of it or maybe something like a, a crude necklace. We put the machine works on a very basic principle, 365 degrees. It has a cutting piece here. It has some different um, adjustments we can make here. I am not an expert, so I don't mess with it too much just so that it works really well. Um, you, it's all hand powered. This is your power right here. Uh, we center it. We move it in a little bit here. Uh, we do a center circle, like so. The blood cutting blade is cutting the center. And then we just do a three degree movement and it cuts a radial design on your piece of metal. So you would use this possibly for a locket or a picture frame holder or some type of picture holder. Um, you could use it for a tie tack or a tie pin. Uh, and we go all the way around the circle. You can adjust this to wider or uh, more degrees. This is a three degree one. You could go to 
10 degrees. Now it's going to get a little tricky because I don't want to go through the hole because it dulls my blade. When we go all the way around, we finish the circle. The last little piece we do is spin it so that it cuts a nice circle on the outside and it just moved. Then you spin it back around to where we started, we release, and what we have is a wonderfully blingy piece of jewelry. Here's another one on the other side, a little different design. So this is engine turning, it was done. Um, we came to have this display when Mr. Hunt passed away and his family deeded it to the museum. So we have his machines, we have his designs and design books, we have a lot of his creative uh, aura right here in this, in this great little exhibit. Over in that corner we have a panograph machine which is another um, engraving machine that uses a template that you follow and you can make a design larger or small. Uh, and this is our mannequin number three, we call him. And this is a great little space and when people come in, if it weren't COVID time, we'd, we'd, I'd give a demo and then I'd ask people if they'd like to try it themselves. Some people are much better than I am at it. So, hope you guys can come down, visit us again, uh, look around, and enjoy what the industry was like in Attleboro 100, 120 years ago. So, what are you looking at right here? These are the wonderful artistic creations of Phil. Krakowski. Philip Krakowski was a sculptor who lived in Attleboro. He died in. 1997. He did some wonderful work. Um, among other things, he did busts for different famous folks. Uh, Lowell Thomas, he was the originator and the, um, the creator of the original 12-inch G.I. Joe action figure for Hasbro Toys, which is over here in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. And what you're looking at in the case are some of his medallions he, and some of his small busts. He loved Native Americans and the West. He loved caricatures, golf, those large um, sculptor art, um, acrylics were done for Lyndon Johnson as a birthday gift from his wife to Lyndon back in the 60s. And as you go along, you're looking at his actual workshop. Philip had no family when he passed. Uh, his workshop was put on auction and a generous benefactor um, bought it and donated it to the museum. So you're looking at the actual tools and the, and the different uh, materials he worked with. He worked in metal, but he always started with a little acrylic or plaster and did his sculpting from there. Uh, that the little pressure cooker for his plastic over there and some of those um, small things were uh, made for different projects. He, he loved whimsy and fantasy and fun. He, he, a lot of his work is very, cre very funny and, and humorous. Um, those are some of his plaques, Lowell Thomas and was one that he did. That's the one on the wall, and uh, uh, the one above that is General LeMay. Uh, he did work for the Remington uh, Winchester, not Remington, gun company. Uh, he did small six-inch figurines. He did the, a lot of the things you're looking at now are some of the plaster um, casts that he did, and some of the wooden background. There's a, a little G.I. Joe up on the top left. Um, he, he did G.I. Joe because Hasbro Toy did not have somebody who captured it for them. And he did, and did it as a contract job for $600 in 1964. 
so we're so we're really fortunate to have his workshop here. Unfortunately, we don't have a complete record of all the different things he made, but we do have a real representation of how he worked and what he did. Um, and again, most everything you look at were donations from people who lived in Attleboro who received these pieces and wanted them to live on. And that's what this museum is. It's a place for people to get a look at what went on in the past. That's Phil on the left working on this particular project. And it shows his process. Might even be the desk that he worked at. Looking at is a photo of the Attleboro Fire Department in 1880. And what they're working with is the Fire Queen. It's a pumper truck. It was built in Pawtucket, Rhode Island and used to fight fires here in Attleboro. All man powered, including transportation. It has 20 foot rails at the top and they get 10 men on either side and they would create a vacuum. There's a pump inside the truck. They put it into a reservoir or a stream or pond. That's how they got their water. And that's how they fought their fires. It was a gift from the local firemen who salvaged it and repurposed it and brought it back to life. And they sold it to us. He told us we needed to polish the brass periodically and preserve it as long as we could. And what we've done with it here in the museum is that we've made it into a bit of a photograph gallery. So what you see hanging on the pump handles are fires that happened right here in downtown Attleboro, starting on the left of the um, in May 1898 was the Brave Fire of Attleboro. It was right here in this jewelry manufacturing district. It wiped out 20 buildings. Luckily, no loss of life, but it kind of slowed down the Attleboro jewelry industry for uh, about a year. They maintained and came back every company except for one and rebuilt and and did their uh, best to be successful. Then you have a 1912 fire, which was in downtown block. It was on the corner of North Main Street and Park Street. It was um, the, in the Bates Theater. The building is still there today. Then you have the Watson Building fire in 1912. It was on Bank Street and it was heavily damaged. They were wood frame buildings back then. Um, in 1899, the city decided to go with more brick buildings to prevent um, devastating fires. Parents Corner Fire, you got the after and the before pictures, 1917. And that was right on the corner of Park Street. South Main Street, I believe. You can see the railroad arches in the back, which were built in 1908. And then the last two photos on our great fire queen here were the Thompson Chemical Explosion Fire. Thompson Chemical is down in the Hebronville section of Attleboro. It produced some pretty uh, volatile chemicals in one winter night. It exploded and there were, uh, I believe, four deaths and evacuations because they weren't sure what was going to happen. And I was a resident of Attleboro and felt my house move at the time. And the final one is the fire that happened at the castle up here at La Salette Shrine. It happened in 1999. Uh, devastated, wiped the, the castle out. Uh, some being parts were were able to be 
saved, but what they did is rebuilt a smaller cathedral. And around the corner here, you can see a great example of what it looked like before. So that one is 1914. You can see what the castle looked like prior to this devastating demise. The Fire Queen is a great piece. People come in and, and are just, they marvel at the fact that this actually fought fires. But I'm told that uh, it would, once you built up the pressure, it had a uh, stream that would reach 100 feet. I've got to do some policy. So what you're looking at is probably our, uh, the history of this building. This is our largest and most valuable artifact. It's the old Attleboro Refining Company building, built in 1899. It was used to refine scrap metals for the jewelry manufacturing companies which were in this neighborhood. This was the jewelry manufacturing center of Attleboro. And they didn't just do Attleboro, they did North Attleboro and Pawtucket and Norton and and uh, Mansfield and whatever companies in, or communities that had companies. And probably the best and most unique thing about this building is the clear story. And the clear story is a rectangular windowed box that sits on top of this building. And if you look, you can see there are 28 windows up there. And they had one primary purpose, and this was before OSHA. They let out toxic fumes from the process of refining. They also let in light. And as time went on, um, more stringent rules and regulations were implemented, and they created a more um, mechanical air system. But this is unique for buildings around the turn of the 20th century that were used for mills and factories and, and the like. So the clear story is quite a neat little old uh, aspect of our building here. What makes the clear story unique is that it is typical of 20th century, early 20th century industrial architecture. They, they were used to let light in and the fumes out. And the old Slater Mill in Pawtucket, Rhode Island has a very small version of a clear story. And I think one of the few buildings in the area that has been preserved and continues to keep the windows and the rectangular uh, shape on top. And hopefully in the near future will be recognized by the, the state and federal government as a historic. It's a great, wonderful space. It does wreak havoc with some UV-related issues with some of our exhibits, but we try to protect that with coverings on the windows. So I wanted to thank you for coming to the Attleboro Area Industrial Museum. I hope you have a great time at the Jewelry City Steampunk Festival 2020 virtual edition. And hopefully next year we'll be right back at it, seeing all you smiling faces and great costumes and wonderful interaction here. Uh, it's been a great event for us here at the Industrial Museum. We, we thank the committee and Heather for getting us involved and hope we can continue with them for years to come. So see ya, come again. Anytime you find us open, Monday, no, not Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday by appointment.